Hi everybody. Today, let's talk about the evolution of ants. Ants are everywhere, in almost any ecosystem on Earth, but we know quite few about their evolution. Dinosaurs have been intensively studied for two centuries. In comparison, ants' paleontology has only been studied for half a century. We tried here to compile the result of some of the research, omitting some of the two complicated parts. We hope that you will like this summary. That being said, let's get into it. How can researchers understand the ants' past? For the most part, researchers observe and analyze fossils. You don't just stumble over their bones as you walk or dig. They leave two types of traces, a 2D print of an insect or a piece of amber with an insect trapped in it, like in Jurassic Park. Researchers prefer to find insects trapped in amber because it offers a 3D vision of the insect. All these traces of the past are rare, so research goes slowly. For a hundred million years of ant history so far, only a few hundred fossils have been found. This is no surprise though. Imagine the chances for an ant to be caught in tree resin. From these traces, researchers can analyze the anatomy of an insect or at least part of it. Then they can compare the DNA of an existent species to map them and compare it to the past species. They might also find traces of their nest, but it's very rare. And without traces of its inhabitants, it's impossible to be sure that a nest belongs to an ant species and not another type of social insect. The main question is, when do we say that an ant looks like an ant? As you see here, modern ants have a lot of anatomy differences. Well, all ants have in common elbowed antenna, a waist called petiole divided in one or two sections, and a metapleural gland. These are also the criteria to identify an ant fossil. Now, let's establish a rough ant species timeline. Ants are ancient beings. They first appeared on Earth between 140 to 168 million years ago, during the Jurassic period. A time when dinosaurs roamed the land and plant life was dominated by pines and ferns. These dates are an estimation and they will probably change as we discover earlier traces. It is also good to know that the fossils that paleontologists have found so far are generally not older than 100 million years. Initially, ants were quite rare compared to other insects meaning that there were fewer species than there are today. But it seems like they had already spread across the planet. The dominant hypothesis is that they were, and this is hard to believe, solitary animals. Even though they finally started to work as a collective, they only counted a maximum of 10 individuals per colony. Some of the most ancient fossils found belong to the Sphicomyrmina ants family. They are 100 million years old. See how they surprisingly look like today's ants? With some exceptions though, like these ants called Hydomyrmex. They also belong to the Sphecomyrmina ants family that, by the way, went extinct. They were able to open their mandibles vertically, kind of like scissors, and not horizontally like today's ants. Also, researchers suspect that they have a common ancestor with a solitary wasp. To understand their connection with wasps and bees, let's have a look at this graph. As we can see here, all bees, wasps and ants belong to the Hymenoptera group a certain category of insects. This Hymenoptera group is subdivided into many different families. Today, we're gonna keep it simple, starting at the bottom with Formicidae. That is just a scientific term for ants. They are next to the Apoidea. This group is composed of bees and wasps looking like bees. That puts bees and ants in the same big family. They are close relatives, like cousins. Their next big step in evolution started a hundred million years ago when the numbers of plants and flowers increased considerably. That provided a new opportunity for ants to diversify their food sources and habitats. Following that, ants started to evolve into many different species. Some stayed on the floor and started digging deep nests, others went to the treetops or kept their nomadic lifestyle. This time period is an important landmark as ants were becoming one of the most dominant insect groups on the planet. The oldest group of ant species still alive is the Neptanilinae. These are a not so well known group of ants. They are mostly concentrated around the Indo-Malayan region. They are pale, small and have a two-section waist. Then two other groups appear. The Poneroids, which are huntresses and mainly predators, and the Formicoids. This last group is well known by ant lovers as it contains some popular species such as carpenter ants, leafcutter ants or army ants. Also in this time period, the first Formicinae appear. Not to be confused with Formicidae, which refers to all ants. This family of ants is well known, as they include the ants that can spray acid to defend or attack. Researchers don't know exactly when, but during that time period, ants started to divide the work between castes and different types of workers.
There's no evidence that ants were affected by the cataclysm, which happened 65 million years ago, also sometimes referred to as the Cretaceous Crisis, that killed millions of species, including dinosaurs and tons of sea species. The reasons why ants were preserved is not 100% clear. Scientists think that the fact that ancient ants were living underground and could adjust their diet easily helped them to pass the crisis. Since then, they have just kept multiplying and diversifying. The end of this Cretaceous era marks the beginning of the modern age for ant species. Later, around 55 million years ago, the first species belonging to the Myrmicina family appeared. This family of ants will flourish to the point of holding 50% of the ant species, and that is still the case today. 50 million years ago, ants started a form of agriculture. Certain hypotheses claim that the crisis that led to the dino extinction forced ants to find a way to store and develop new sources of food. Around 12 to 8 million years ago, leafcutter ants appeared. They grow a mushroom that they feed on and live in. In order to cultivate the mushroom, they use decomposed leaves that they use as a substrate. Today, they can't survive without this mushroom, and the mushroom cannot spread without the ants. The well-known fire ants started to spread around. These ants spread a venom that burns like fire. Their Latin name is Solenopsis invicta. Their success story started one million years ago, when it became a polygynous species. They could produce more workers than the other colony and therefore were able to outnumber the other species. Through all these changes, ants have not only survived, but they thrived, colonizing almost every landmass on Earth. Today, scientists have identified over 12,500 ant species, with many more likely yet to be discovered. In tropical regions alone, the biomass of ants outweighs that of all vertebrate animals combined. So far, their only limit is the fact that they are quite sensitive to cold temperatures. Ants developed a cool trick, which is to hibernate when the chilly season comes around. We'll talk about that in a different video. Thank you for watching, subscribe to our channel to stay tuned and hit the bell to be sure not to miss our next films. And let us know if you have any suggestions for future videos.